Well, we got another color question. And this one, um, this person says, I understand. Oh, so you talk a lot about getting the right color, but I am confused. I understand how to tell which value a color is, but hue and intensity baffle me. How can you tell what the hue and intensity of a dark color is when it comes straight out of the tube? Well, we can approach this one again scientifically. To help you to uh, learn how to do what I'm about to show you, we have a little aid for you on our website. You can go to the website, dianeminds.com. In the menu, click on Free Stuff. You'll find we have a number of free helps for you there. And one of them is an intensity wheel. Uh, what we've done here is simply divided or shown how colors will change in intensity uh, when their complement has been added to them. Now, a number of colors that we get in the tubes are already lower or lower saturations. Intensity means the saturation of the hue is lower or higher. That's what the word intensity means. It refers to the saturation of the hue. All right. Some of our colors, a number of them, in fact, are already in the tube at a lower saturation. And that's what the, one thing that this person was asking for. And also how to identify the hue. Uh, so if and she was and this person is specifically referring to darker colors as they come out of the tubes. So I'm going to show you a little method here again. It's the scientific method for being able to figure that out. If you need to know the intensity of the color, and you often do because you know if you if you add any lower intensity color to a higher intensity color, you're going to lower the intensity of the color you added it into, uh, and the reverse can work too. So it's always important to, to know your tube colors as to their hue and their intensity and their potential value. So I'm going to start now with a color that is dark as it comes out of the tube. This particular one is the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Burnt Orange. So we'll just squirt a little bit of that right here. You can see as it comes out of the tube, it's very dark and hard to identify. Now, it's called Quinacridone Burnt Orange. So that suggests the hue of orange to begin with. Sometimes labels on, on the uh, tubes of colors won't necessarily suggest what color it is or what hue it is. Um, so one way we can identify the hue, uh, well, let's first of all, well, let's do this. One way we can identify it, we want to thin the color out a little bit so that we can see through or see, the, see it as transparent and see what the hue is. Now we could add white, but if you add white to a color, you're also going to cool it just a little bit. But there's a better way to do this if you want to identify the hue. Um, so if you take some refined mineral spirits or turpentine, if you enjoy working with turpentine, but any refined solvent, and just a tiny bit on the brush, a tiny bit worked into just a, a tiny bit of the color so that when you pull it down you can see the transparency. Well I'll tell you what I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to put the, uh, a sample of the darker color before we've changed its consistency. I'm going to put a, a, a little spot here. You can see how very dark it's transparent. Um, most of the dark colors, not the earth colors, but a whole lot of the dark colors as they come out of the tube are transparent and which is one reason why it's hard to identify also makes this method uh, work for you very easily now in a version that has just a little bit of solvent in it you see we can now see through it we can now identify or uh, come closer to identifying its hue I like to use the little test strips, and if you've been watching many of the videos or of our quick tips or seen my lessons, you'll know that I really like this little method. Five by three, by, little three by five cards or card stock. Just cut yourself little strips like this, and I call them test strips. So I will just on the end, all the way down, all the way down on the end, I will paint a sample of that and get it nice and evenly covered. And I'll go to the color wheel. Always go to the color wheel for a reference. As I move it around in the color wheel, I can see that yes, that is uh, 
in the orange range. Well, it's not exactly on orange, so it's more almost leaning towards a red orange. And we can see it's very slightly lowered intensity. It's not the bright, brilliant red orange that we see in the fully saturated color. It is lower in intensity. Now, one way we can uh, examine the intensity of it is, is to add white, but to identify the hue, it's better just to add the solvent. So let's go the other direction then. And let's pull just a little bit over on the palette and add just a tiny bit of white to it to see if we can identify the intensity. Just a very tiny bit of white. And get it a value uh, that we can read. And it could be almost any value. But because the color wheel is in this value range right here, uh, I'm going to get that about um, an upper or uh, upper middle value, I mean, yes, upper middle, meaning uh, in the middle value range, but a little lighter than. Something about right that right there. That also shows you the difference between what white does to a color and what the, uh, just adding the solvent does. So here we go, and I'll just get a sample of that. And, um, well, first of all, let's put it on the test strip. Let's see. Right here, there it is on the test strip. Now, if we hold that right here, we see that that intensity is about one degree less saturated than the intensity is here. One or two. Um, so that tells you that the quinacridone burnt orange is not a fully saturated color. That it is slightly lowered in saturation. You see, it's not that brilliant, not the brilliance of the white, but you pull it down closer to this and you can see it's about uh, one degree, one to two, about one degree would be uh, a good rule of thumb, um, less saturated than the, fully, than the uh, fully saturated hue of red orange. So those two little uh, processes can help you to identify both the hue and the intensity. Now let's do another one that's a little different. This one is the Rembrandt Viridian. So I'll put this there, like that. Now be sure I rinse these brushes out thoroughly and show you Rembrandt Viridian as it comes out of the tube. It too is very transparent and here it is straight out of the tube, right there. That is almost identifiable uh, if we put that on a test strip. like this. It's almost identifiable. When we move it up, we can see that it actually falls into the blue-green range. Now, when the color is that transparent, uh, it might not be necessary to add the solvent into it. The purpose of the solvent is to get it a little bit more transparent so that we can identify the hue. But you see, we can there, this, it's not, it, it's cooler bluer than this green, but we can pull it down here and you see it's pretty much on the nose of blue-green or as blue-green registers on this color wheel. So, but what, what saturation is it? Well, it looks, a, it looks fully saturated. Right here, if I pull it down here, we can see this feels a little bit duller than that. But if we want to be absolutely sure, we don't need much, but just a tiny bit of white. Be sure that palette knife is clean. I just spotted some of that other color on it. Just a touch, a, just a touch of white in here, like this, is sufficient. Oh, I wanted to go ahead and just uh, pull this down and add it thinner. See, you can just with uh, making the uh, strokes thinner, uh, we can see the, the full hue of that. Now let's see about the saturation. So. I'll just get another t color, uh, test strip and I'll put a little bit more of it, that in there, like that, and put it on the test strip, like this. Now let's check it against that uh, that wheel, and we can see it's not. This feels duller, so we we will know then. You can see that the Viridian, Rembrandt Viridian, as it comes out of the tube, is pretty much a fully saturated hue. 
So we could try one more that uh, we're all familiar with. Alizarin Crimson has been a precious color to artists for decades. Um, it was discovered that Alizarin Crimson has a little bit of a, a instability in light. And so the um, manufacturers, some, some of the manufacturers, have come up with uh, an Alizarin Permanent. So the color I have here is the Alizarin Permanent by Gamblin. I'll just put this right here. Now, we can almost tell what the hue is of Alizarin. Almost, but not quite. Let's get a full version of it right here. Now, when I put it on the canvas, you see it looks very, very dark. Uh, um, uh, we can see a little bit of a trace right over here. You see it's very, very dark. But because of its uh, transparency already, we might be able to tell without adding the solvent. So, a lot of the, the transparent colors as they come out of the tube might not need the solvent added to them in order to be able to tell the hue. So, uh, well, let me see. I better, let's do this part first. So it's fully scientific. We'll do this all the way. I think I forgot to do this step with the uh, Viridian, but we're just going to put it like that. There we go. So if we hold this in the color wheel and move it around, it doesn't seem relative to anything. Uh, it's just too dark to be able to read it. So let's just pull a little bit of that paint out. And let's see, Can't do we need the solvent? I don't think we need the solvent. You see, if we just lightly stroke having just a touch. Alizarin is really high intent in strength regardless of whether it's the uh, original Alizarin or um, the permanent. It's very high intent in strength so uh, we need to probably stroke it several times. Just a little bit of it on the canvas. And now we can read. Uh, we can see it's in a red range. Alright now let's test it on the let's tested the, the hue of it on the uh, color wheel. Now what's happening when I put that on that uh, test strip is that color really soaks in there so it's saying perhaps if I want to really read that I need to add a little bit of solvent in order to be able to test it on the test strip. It's because the test strip didn't have any sizing in it and so the, the paint soaked through so let's just uh, give that a little bit of a mix there tiny bit of solvent in it and then now that's that's more like what we have right here. Now we go to the color wheel and we can identify the hue. Now we can see it sort of swings. It's not quite as red as the red on the color wheel. Not quite and yet it's not as purple or as the red violet. Not leaning that much towards violet. But it does tilt in this direction. So you see, it's really a cool red. So we'll know then that's the hue. It's a hue of red that leans slightly towards violet. All right, so what about the intensity of that red? And we'll add just a little bit of white, not much. Just a little bit of white to it and see what do we have there. Do we have a red that's a lot, slightly lower in intensity or is it a... a fully saturated intensity. So just add just enough in there to be able to see it. Let's see about the uh, value. Perhaps just a tiny bit more. So these are tests that you can run on all your tube colors scientifically. I, I do enjoy the scientific analysis of color. Uh, the theoretical stuff is a very little value to you uh, if you don't put it into practice. I mean, you can take theory and prove anything by it. But when you actually put these things into practice scientifically, you can discover for yourself what they're made of and how they behave. So now let's see. Let's put this on the test strip. And that gives us relatively a true reading. Now we can see that tends to be a little bit less saturated than the the really strong reds or even the really the really fully saturated violets just slightly desaturated so let's we can put that well 
just as a comparison, let's rinse the brush out really, really good. And get just a little bit of sampling of that right beside the uh, right beside the thin one, the one without the white in it. And there you can see it. There you can see just the you just kind of feel that slight desaturation. That part. Some of you are going to say, "Well, yeah, but white would do that." Well, true, white does uh, because white is all colors combined together, and in you may say all colors combined together or all colors taken away, either way you want to say it. It does have a tendency to slightly neutralize. But when we compare, uh, we compare the strength, the saturation of a true red with the red we're seeing here, just very slightly desaturated. So that is a wonderful way for you to discover uh, the characteristics of your colors, especially those dark colors in your tubes. Just go by it scientifically. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can go, they're free. Go to our website and download it. Print it on good quality print paper. I think, they, well, no, they're not instructions there. They might be instructions. I can't remember. But anyway, the point is, rather than believing theory, anybody's theory, go about discovering your color scientifically using these kinds of scientific methods and you'll find out what you need to know about that color in order to be able to kind of gauge what it's going to do when it mixes with another color. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.